guys, Ashley here. Today I'm going to be bringing you my monthly manga wrap up where I talk about all the mangas I read this month. But for this one, we're going to be doing June, July, and August because I can't read mangas consistently for my life. Yes. Okay, so let's get to the mangas I read this month. Woo! So the first two I picked up, I actually bought when I was in King of Kania two months ago. And I was like, who? Looking at the bookstore, looking in the manga section, I was like, I think I need something trashy and cutesy and feely. So I spotted Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight by Rin Mikimoto. Yeah, look at it. Doesn't that just look like all the trash? <laughs> Immediately caught my eye because it says Starstruck on the back. An all new Cinderella story with outrageous twists and turns. Ha! Huh. So Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight follows a girl named Himana. She is a high school student who's kind of just over juvenile romances, but she secretly kind of hopes for a fairy tale romance. And that sort of happens for her when a super hot celebrity comes to her school and films a movie there. And so they kind of meet in a chance encounter and things move forward from there. Now as far as it having a Cinderella retelling aspect, that was over very quickly. It lasted for like two seconds. Cause I was kind of thinking like, okay, they're gonna meet. He's not gonna know who she is. He's gonna need to find her. But no, he immediately knows who she is. He finds her. It's over very quickly. Overall, I felt like this had potential to be my trashy romance manga I wanted and needed at the time. But it fell a little flat for me. I believe I gave this one three or four stars. I can't remember. I'm not quite sure. I really enjoyed the art style. Everyone is drawn in a very nice, pretty way. Their meet cute, if you want to say, was cute. But the thing and why I did not enjoy this as much as I wanted to is because this boy, this boy named Cade or Kaid, Kaid, however you say his name, he has this weird fascination or fetish, if you might want to say, with the booty. This boy likes the booty. <laughs> That was just very like off-putting and it was just like random and like, oh, okay. And it kind of just ruined all these cute moments they were having and me trying to want to like this main boy protagonist. It just, everything was ruined by that because he was just bringing it up at random times and she would be kind of weirded out by it. Like she herself as a main character was weirded out by it. So me as a reader was also weirded out by it. So I feel like any potential the series had to be cutesy for me was ruined by that and I was like okay you know maybe it'll get better maybe he won't have this weird fetish in the second one maybe it's kind of just like facade this mask he's wearing because you know he's a celebrity maybe he doesn't want to reveal his true self so he masks that by having this like weird perversion so I picked up with hopes, with high hopes, I picked up Case with the Stroke of Midnight. Volume 2, there's our boy, looking handsome, looking at potential, but no, he's still, he's still weird. He's still fascinated with the booty. <laughs> I don't know why it's so fun to say, the booty. Yeah, Case with the Stroke of Midnight, three or four stars, had potential, was kind of ruined by the booty thing, yeah. Next one I picked up is also for Kenya Kenya. I bought this one while I was in New York for Book Expo, and that one is Utsubura, the story of a novelist. This one immediately caught my eye because, first of all, the cover is very intriguing. It's just like this girl with a blunt, short haircut. It's white. It's very, like, simplistic. I like it. But I had saw reviews online that kind of compared this plotline to that of Mirakami's work. If you don't know who that is, he is also a Japanese novelist who I am obsessed with right now. He's so good. This one follows a girl. She wants to become a published author, but before she can do that, she unfortunately dies. They don't know if it's a murder. They don't know if it's a suicide. They don't know what. All they know is on the phone that they find at the center of the crime scene is one contact, and that is that of another author she had met previously. We follow the story in his perspective and how he's related to this girl and how he himself is trying to write. It has plagiarism, murder, mystery, intrigue, all that sounds great. However, this one I think I also gave three stars because it does jump from the present to the future quite a lot. It was very confusing. And any concept of the story, metaphorically, whatever you want to call it, I was just lost because I was confused with the concept. This one does have that ages 18 and up rating on the back. There is quite a lot of sex in it, but that wasn't really what docked it down for me. It was more of just a confusing plot line. And I guess I could see the potential on how the story would be like kind of interesting, but it, it lost me. This was a dud for me, and unfortunately, I mean, it's very nice aesthetically looking, the cover. So, you know, I will keep it because, you know, you know. Maybe if I read it again, I would enjoy it more just because I can grasp more of the story, but, uh, yeah. So now, those are my meh mangas. Now we're moving on to the horror 
I was in a very big spooky feeling this month. I picked up, if you saw my book Timothon vlogs, I picked up Dissolving Classroom by Junji Ito. If you know me, I'm obsessed with horror. Junji Ito, the king of horror. Ha! Huh? Why have I not read this one? I don't know. But yes, Dissolving Classroom is one of his short story compilations. This one follows the tale of two siblings and how they wreak havoc wherever they go, whatever town they come in, and whatever people they encounter, they wreak havoc on them. So we follow multiple short stories that all weave together because they all are being plagued by the same siblings. So yes, they just wreak havoc wherever they go. Look at all the melting people. You know, if you like the creepy, I love Junji Hito as always. His ability to capture this weird creepiness through subtle facial expressions is just, ooh, it's great. It's so good. Five out of five stars to Junji Ito, of course. So moving on to some more scary manga. I picked up this one called Ibitsu. I had never heard about it. I had never seen anything about it. It was just in the store. It was big. It was wrapped up. I was like, ooh, what shit is in here? <laughs> this one follows the tale of this urban legend. It's about a gothic Lolita girl that may appear to you in probably alleys near garbage drops. And if she appears, she'll ask you one question and that question is would you like to have a little sister and depending on what your answer is you may die and that's kind of like an urban legend kind of like a bloody mary type of thing you know it's this myth legend people believe but like not really so this one follows a boy and how he encounters this alita in an alley one day he's asked a question and then all hell breaks loose as she torments and haunts him throughout the story i actually thoroughly enjoyed this one compared to junji ito because that is more of the horror i read it's not as subtly creepy and like chills you to the bone. It's more like a surface level creepy because it is very graphic and that's why it was wrapped up. Graphic in the sense it's very bloody, gory, gutsy. It's very graphic. This bitch is going around cutting people with an axe. So if that's your thing, you will thoroughly endure this. Me, I really like this. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It's like a slasher film. It's like very surface level horror. It's not like psychologically or mentally disturbing like Junji Ito's work, but it's very creepy. So if this author puts out any more stuff, I will definitely be in treats. We went through my mad mangas, we went through the horror mangas I read, and now it's time to read my favorites, go through my favorites. This one I also read during Booktubeathon, I also bought Kino Kaniya, and I'm instantly regretting not picking up volume 2. I always do this, I was there, I saw it, but I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna like it, and I liked it. <laughs> and it's I Hear the Sunspot, this one follows a boar named Boar. Why can I not pronounce words today? Boar? What is that? This one follows a boy named Kohei, he suffers from hearing loss, so he has a hearing disability and it's kind of how he's just generally misunderstood by his peers in his high school and how he's unable to integrate into that life of I guess like an average high school teenager but then enter our boy Taichi and how he heals his heart and helps mend his life if you want to say but let me tell you I said this in my vlog I will say it again let me read you this little blurb on the back Quote for quote says, Taichi's words cut through Kohei's usual defense mechanisms like a knife and open his heart. More than friends, less than lovers, their relationship changes Kohei forever. Ah! If that does not make you want to just like feel things, like who are you? But yeah, this initially reminded me of A Silent Voice, which is also a movie. I'd seen the movie, I had never read the manga, but like kind of similar plot storyline where the girl is deaf, she was bullied, this boy who was her bully comes and like befriends her and helps her, blah. I hear the sunspot, I gave four out of five stars just because this first one I feel like is more of an introduction book. It kind of introduces you to the characters and Kohei's situation and it introduces Taichi. The plot in general is not very gripping or like intense or like a page turner because it's just very slow moving and like I said introducing you to the characters and their situation. The second one however that I failed to buy um, was very thick so that excites me. So yeah hopefully it picks up but I gave it four out of five stars just because the emotional depth it goes into was really heartwarming. The facial expressions that were drawn, certain panels just hit you in the heart, certain lines were just wow, whoa, that was impactful, that made me feel big. So I hear the sunspot, I definitely was liking and I definitely will be picking up volume two, so we'll see that next time. And last but not least, I saved my favorite for last. That is my beloved, my very beloved, Dreamin' Sun volume seven by Ichigo Takano. 
Uh, you know, every time I see Dream and Son, I'm like, yeah, that series is okay. Like, I'm probably like hyping it more than I should, but no, I pick up the next volume and I'm still like loving it, loving it, loving it. So, yes, Dream and Son, volume seven. We're still following Shimana and the gang and their drama, yada, yada, yada. I can't really explain what the plot is at this point. I guess if you haven't been watching my videos, you don't know what Dream and Son is about. Ichigo Takano is the same author of Orange, my favorite. So, it's about a girl named Shimana and how she moves out of her house and moves in with these three guys and lives with them. She has all these like love interests, relationships with them. Yeah. Usually in manga, when I read books and the side characters are kind of introduced more or are focused on more, I kind of don't like it. I'm like, okay, let's get back to our main plot line. But in Ichigo Takana, I don't mind that. So in this one, this side character was introduced and I really enjoyed him. I liked him. Ha, huh, Zen, my boy Zen was great. Greater than ever. He's such a good friend. I'll say that every time. Zen, Zen, Zen. Team Zen, people. Team Zen. But yeah, I really like this one. Five out of five stars. I'm so looking forward to the next one, which I think doesn't come out till October. Ugh. Dream and Sun. If you if you want some romantic, feely, nice, funny times, like I always say, it makes me laugh so much. Pick up Dream and Sun. You won't regret it. All right, guys, and that is my monthly manga wrap up for these past couple months. I'm gonna try to read manga more consistently. But yes, all right, comment below. Make it sure to give it a like. Also, have you read any of these? Do you disagree? Do you agree? Everyone's entitled to your opinion, so please share. If you have any more recommendations for me, I would love to hear. I'm always about the recommendations. But yes, okay, my name is Ashley. This is Ashley Page, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, thank you.